How do I get the most out of new electronic music gear? Let me tell you. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to Freebeat, where I post new music-related content every single day. So if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and be sure to check out my upcoming album, FB1. It's releasing on Saturday, October 30th at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time via a free live stream debut party right here on the channel. Hope to see you there. Let's get started. So let me know if this has ever happened to you. You discover a new piece of electronic music gear, you get really excited about it, you do all your research, you watch a ton of videos, you determine that yes, it is the device for you. It's gonna really improve your workflow or just your overall songwriting, electronic music making experience. You finally pull the trigger on the device, you get it home, you open it up, and all of a sudden your mind goes blank. It's like you never watched a video on it, or never read a review, never read the manual. You just stare at it and start playing with, I don't know, some presets or whatever, and within a few hours of unboxing the device, your hype kind of dies down. Well, this has happened to me many times. The biggest device this happened to me with was uh, the Akai MPC-1 here. Uh, and the reason I've got the OP-1 on the desk is because uh, the OP-1 was my first purchase where I actually implemented the strategy that I'm going to share with you today uh, to maintain my excitement and get the most out of that piece of gear. So the strategy is pretty simple. Um, while you are waiting for your piece of gear to either arrive or right before you actually go and get it, uh, make a list of everything you want to do with that piece of gear. That's it. It's as simple as making a list of everything you want to do with that piece of gear. Now, this list could be a bunch of end goals, like, hey, I want to write this many songs by this date or whatever. Uh, but more specifically, I think it's better to narrow that list down to specific features of that device that you want to explore on day one. So like I mentioned, the OP-1 was the first device I did this with, and I'm going to share that list with you in just a second. Uh, but let's look at the MPC-1 uh, for just a second. I did not make a list, really, with the MPC-1 of things that I wanted to learn or take a look at on day one. I just basically got it. Uh, and started, you know, fiddling around with the basic song structure features, um, you know, sequences, assigning basic drum kits and plugins to programs, and then, you know, uh, just the, the, the bare minimum, the bare basics. And because of that, what, it took me, I think, five months uh, after getting the MPC-1 uh, to actually crank out my first full song with it. Whereas with the OP-1, uh, again, I made a list beforehand, and I've had this for maybe a month and a half now, I don't even think that long, and I've already got an album coming out, a full album at the end of the month. Uh, so you can see the, the difference was quite huge for me um, in terms of no list or list. So let me share that with you now. So I'm going to uh, scoot the MPC one out of the way here real quick um, and go over this list. So. My goal with the OP-1 was, of course, to use it as a songwriting tool uh, that I could work with in a linear fashion. So the first thing I said that I needed to learn was how to sequence in every sequencer mode and how to record each sequencer to tape. So, of course, on the OP-1, uh, you know, we go into our sequencers here. We've got a whole list of them. Um, I'm not going to go through everything, uh, but you can... There's the arpeggiator, for instance, and then I learned that you can press tape and just hold record and record that to tape. I'm not going to record it to tape right now because I've got another uh, song that I'm working on already on the OP-1. But you get the idea. Uh, that, to me, was a key feature of the OP-1 that I needed to commit to memory as fast as possible and learn exactly how it worked. Next up, I said repeatedly go over the transportation shortcuts, which uh, are jumping around, you know, your uh, timeline here, your tape, using the arrow keys <laughs> and uh, shift in the arrows, start of the song with uh, stop and uh, the arrow, end of the song, stop and forward arrow, things like that. I also wanted to figure out how to quickly switch between my synth presets, which I have, uh, of course, figured out that one was actually pretty easy. Um, and then memorize the four different pages of parameters, uh, which of course are your sample or uh, synth engine controls, your envelope, your effects, and the LFO section. 
Next up, I said I wanted to learn how to use the in and out points and how to, you know, loop stuff and turn loops on and off uh, just as an easy way to uh, work around the timeline and rehearse parts and figure things out. Sort of in the same vein, I wanted to figure out how to use the lift and drop shortcuts uh, with shift. When you're looping, you can actually do all the tracks at once. Uh, that included learning how the cut and join function worked as well. Uh, basic tape navigation stuff. And then on my list, I also said successfully sample into both drum and synth engines, and then in parentheses I put not a priority. I already knew getting into the OP1 that uh, when I was working on the album, I just wanted to use mostly preset stuff, so it wasn't really a priority for me to learn how to sample, but I still wanted to get the very, very basics down. Um, and of course, we actually started exploring sampling, I believe that was yesterday's video with the Micro Freak. So uh, yeah, finally getting around to that. Uh, but I at least wanted to get the very basics down, like I said. So obviously that list has served me really well with the OP1, because I was able to crank out an album with it. And for me, the reason that this list system works is because I really learn by doing, not necessarily by watching or reading. Um, watching the tutorials and everything before I get the device is more kind of to hype me up on it, I think I've realized. Whereas then if I can write down a list of everything I want to go down and actually figure out for myself, um, it's way easier for me to memorize and thus, uh, you know, have an easier time working with that device when I get it. So now let me share my uh, list with you for the uh, MPC here. Uh, first and foremost, I want to learn how the sampler works. I uh, am possibly holding one of the most powerful samplers you can get for under a thousand dollars here with the MPC-1, and I really don't know anything about it. We used the auto sampler once before, or a couple times before, and that was really cool, but I know that the MPC is so much more than just an auto sampler, so I really want to learn how the sampler works, and breaking that down even further, I want to really understand the sample storage and the, you know, the file folder architecture of the device uh, when it comes to samples, because that is still pretty confusing to me. And I know once I can wrap my head around that, I'm going to really enjoy working on the MPC a lot more than I already do, which is, you know, already quite a lot. I also really want to get into the looper which is something I've never touched. I don't think I've been in that screen once. This might be the first time I've ever been to the looper. I'm not sure. Uh, I have no clue what I'm looking at here. And then I also really want to play around more with the pad mix and pad mute in terms of actually recording those. I actually get asked about those features all the time, and honestly, I don't really know how they work. So that is something that I need to learn. And the last item on my uh, at least current list would be learning how to use the Q-Links more efficiently. Uh, there's this whole Q-Link edit section, and uh, just like the looper, I don't think I've ever been to this screen before. So that is something that I definitely need to learn how to use. So as you can see, there's quite a huge difference, at least for me, when I don't make a list, you know, as compared to when I do make a list. And luckily, as I just discussed with the MPC here, you can still make a list post-purchase. Uh, but it's just kind of silly that, at least for me again, um, I've let a device sit here like this, you know, months after purchasing it without exploring all of the features. And it's stuff that I just really forgot to look into when I first purchased the device when my hype and excitement for it was at its peak. So, uh, yeah, I really suggest making a list next time you want to purchase a piece of electronic music gear. Uh, late in the process, of course, you don't want to make a list for something you're not actually going to purchase. I think it's a really healthy thing that you can do to uh, help you feel like you got your money's worth, um, obviously squeeze as much value out of the gear as possible, and uh, I can't believe I only just now started doing this with the OP-1. Let me know if you've been doing this or if you're going to start now after watching this video. Speaking of this video, I do hope you found it informative or at least entertaining. If you did, be sure to leave a like on it. If not, you can always leave a dislike. That's okay, too. Doesn't hurt my feelings, just makes me try that much harder next time. Either way, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Thank you so very much for being here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.